Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to my lightning talk on perform script by name and how to try to make your solutions a little more scalable. Quick agenda, I'd like to describe the why, why we decided to go with perform script by name in our solution, why you should consider it, a quick recap of our design process, final solutions detail, and a demo. And I'll try not to scare you, I'm gonna go fast but I'll try not to scare you like I do the older kids on Halloween. <laughs> um, my name is Ed McPike. I'm from Ashburn, Virginia. I'll blow through my background a little bit here. I played soccer my whole life. I love sports. I coach three different sports. I love fantasy football and I use FileMaker Pro uh, personally to help me coach my teams, manage rosters, positions, games, and stats. Also to analyze my fantasy football teams. <laughs> Contact info is up there if you uh, feel free to reach out to me afterwards if you have any questions. I have a computer programming background, taught myself computer languages in middle school, learned more in high school and in college when I was a majoring in mining and minerals engineering at Virginia Tech. I've never been in a mine, don't want to go in a mine, but it's still a good education. Uh, I've been certified in FileMaker versions 8 through 18 now. And uh, soon after college, I discovered FileMaker 3.0 and never looked back. It kind of reinvigorated the programming desire in me. So it was a CE company I worked for back then. And then I um, kind of became IT director and decided I didn't want to do all that stuff. Focus on, I wanted to focus on computer programming. Started my own FileMaker development consulting company, which led me to National Geographic and a great opportunity there. Uh, working with uh, Rick Forgo and a team of in-house developers on some great applications for their magazines. And I was honored to have an application highlighted in uh, the 2015 DevCon keynote and then shocked and surprised to win a FileMaker Excellence Award for that and completely honored. I've now been working at Tripalo, a Cox business company for the past three years. It is a remote patient monitoring company. We provide services to hospitals and insurance companies. Um, so if a patient leaves a hospital, they don't, they want to monitor them, make sure they stay on their, uh, prescribed program so that they don't have to come back in the hospital. So what they do is they'll order a pa uh, they'll place an order with us for the patient and we'll send them a generic kit. I mean, a standard kit usually of medical devices, which usually consists of a blood pressure monitor, pulse ox, and a weight scale, draw a Bluetooth and send the vitals to a hub of some sort, like a, an iPad or Samsung tablet, which passes those vitals up to a backend application where monitors, where nurses, doctors, clinicians can monitor, get touch base with the patients if something's, uh, if there's an outlier um, from some of those readings and make sure they're staying on the program. So our solution actually tracks the warehouse logistics, inventory products, customer service tasks, tickets, and things like that. So our problem, why did we decide to do this? As many of you have done, we have a lot of hard-coded menus. We have a different script attached to each button in that button bar. What happens when you need to change that button bar? You fix it once, you fix it on all the layouts, you fix it once and copy it to all the layouts and make sure you're tapping it over, make sure it's aligned just right. And that can be tedious, that can be difficult, right? Um, so as far as menus go, we also have a lot of, you can see hide calculations there. We have hide calculations to hide stuff people don't have access to. That takes us going into those hide calculations and tweaking that if we need to change access. And that's just tedious and it's not scalable. So um, additionally, our customer service team, they have tasks they need to do. They need to follow up on tickets. They need to do things for the patients, monitor shipping, things like that. So we have a lot of buttons that they go to. They're not really scattered like that, but it feels like it. They're in a row. But with some clients, they go in a different order. And right now, our customer service team just knows the order to do it in. And that's not right. They don't, shouldn't have to think about that. They should come in and see the next task and do it. So we needed a solution to fix all that. Um, so why perform script by name? It's dynamic. So our first ideas were to use a card window for the uh, menu. That's good and all, but I didn't want to hard code those buttons again. Hard coding again, you know, the, it's great that you don't have to change it in one spot, but some people have done this instead. You know, you do a script, one script on each of the buttons and you pass an ID, but then you're still doing a different script maybe with each else if, and you still have to go in there and change it. Um, it's still not scalable. Um, so we decided to go with an easier to manage solution based on, for the menus, security roles, 
So we have user roles in there. Uh, so we have a table of privilege sets, role types, employee versus client, roles under each of those role types. And then we can go in and we can create menus with menu items and assign those menus to the roles. So when a person logs in, the login process will set their role to a global in the background so the system knows what menus they need. So when they go to the navigation menu, it will only show them what items they need to see. So with perform script by name, I, I decided we can't quite use that yet because it'll break if you change the script name, right? And then you have to go to all those places to change the script name. So I thought of the calculation script IDs and script names. And if you call both of those and you send it the file name, it will simply pass back a uh, list of IDs, and that's FileMaker's internal IDs, and the script names that are in that file that you pass to them. So now you have a couple of lists, and you can loop through it with uh, variables. Can everybody see that okay back there? Everybody, so you can loop through it with variables, pull the matching, matching uh, pairs, the first, the second, third, and create records in a scripts table with those. And then what we do is we create a utility script where when the menu item is selected, we pass that script ID, and then we query the script table to get the script name, then call perform script by name by that returned name. We can also pass a parameter that way as well. So if you can see that that's part of the code, we assign the, um, the list of IDs to a variable, list of names to a variable, count the number of variables, and then use your usual incrementing of an index to loop through and get those variables. We do a find and make see if that script ID exists in the table or not. If not, it creates the record and adds the script name. If it does, it checks to see if the script name has changed. If not, it updates it. Sorry about that. And the, oh, I didn't mention the great thing about that is if you delete the records and truncate the, file, truncate the table for some reason, that's okay. It recreates it and everything you've set is still the same because it's FileMaker's internal script ID. So this is the utility perform script by name script we use. So as you can see, we pass a JSON object to it that has two nodes in it, a script ID, and then another JSON object which has a parameter that you might want to pass to whatever script you're calling. That is a query we do using execute SQL to send the script ID over and return the script name. And then of course you want to handle errors. You won't see any with this code. No, of course you will. But you want to handle it just in case. If there's an error, we'll notify ourselves, notify IT right away so we can take care of it because if that's in production, which hopefully by then there won't be any errors, but we still want to know about it and fix it right away. So at that point, we've got all the settings tables in there. You just add the data and it works. Um, we have system menus, system menu items, system tasks, workflows, roles, role types, privilege sets, and everything. And then you end up with a nice, scalable, portable navigation menu, as the example will do today. So now I'm gonna quickly do a little demo. Let me mirror my screen here for you. So this demo file has been updated as of last night. I'm not sure if it's up there yet, but you will receive it at least with the speaker up, with the updates. Uh, when you get in there, there's a bunch of pre-created, if you want to play around with it, there's pre-created uh, accounts there. Passwords for all of them are DevCon 2019, as listed here. There's a readme file as well in that file uh, with this information. Right now, I am logged in with admin. So the first thing I did when I set this up was to come in here and go to privilege sets and created a record for each privilege set we have. This was not populated yet at the time. I then went into role types and created the two role types we need, employee and client. And then created roles associated with those role types. Database developer has full access. These people have slightly different access. Same with the client. Then we had to go in and create the menus themselves. For now, for this, I created two, a FileMaker Pro navigation menu and a WebDirect menu, navigation menu. And then what you do on this screen, it's nice. This is, this is the meat right here. You just put in whatever you want to call your menu item. If you want a header, which I've added here for a nice little interface to divide up sections, 
you attach a header there. If a line is a header, you check that box. If it needs a header, you pick from, and this kind of generates the list from the items you have checked off. And then you select from a pop-up menu, the scripts in that script table. This is a pop-up menu, so it's actually storing the internal filemaker ID for that script in the background. And I actually did the same, this same technique for layouts that you could do uh, go, to, go to layout by name. So for this case, since it's a navigation menu, I also attached the layout to which it's going. And so I just did that for both menus here. And then we go to the roles that were created. And under the roles that were created, we can create, add whatever menu items we want each role to see when they log into the system. And as an example here, so to do it, this isn't a created, creatable portal, so to speak. I just add menu items this way and pick what I want and it slides over. So to see it dynamically, I can delete a couple menu items right now off of my account. There were six, now there's only four under the system settings. So if I come here back to the menu, you'll see there's only four showing. If I close that menu, open this up, add those back in, close my card selector, come back in here and my menu items are back. I can go all over the place here, go see my participants. We got Ovi, all right. His task is to score a hat trick, which he does a lot. Come back home and I'll show you a couple other accounts real quick. So I can, I set up that re-login button that you can use by the way, to switch between these accounts and test it out. And it will do the login process at the beginning so that all the menus will be set when you come back in. So we'll log in as 11 from Stranger Things. Really glad that she's happy with this solution because I do not want to be torn apart with her mind. If you look here, menu is nice and restricted, right? Click around, works great. She's gonna work on the Star Wars program for us. No reports yet for her. Come back home, we'll re-log in as Debbie from Time Life. Um, only those my age will actually get that reference. And you'll see she's a customer service rep taking phone calls, so she only sees what she needs to see. She cannot modify programs and things like that. And we'll go ahead and log in real quick as client admin. So clients accessing this will pretend from WebDirect, uh, DevCon 2019. And you can see that they have access to their program administration where maybe they can add their own users, request users, look at their reports. And again, go to participants and see that OV has to score that hat trick again. Um, so that's it for the demo. Let me go back real quick to my slides. And go over a couple of quick housekeeping things. Uh, testing, I tested a lot with this. I tested blank scripts. I tested just a hyphen. I tested dividers. I tested folders. None of it broke. It worked fine. No matter what you did, I'd move scripts out of order. I tried everything to break it. It works fine because it's just storing FileMaker's internal script IDs. The only thing to break it is if you delete the script and create it new, it's not gonna know. You have to go reattach it in all those settings tables. Um, warning, if you, this uses what's called indirection. So if you analyze your solutions at all with the DDR and use a tool like FM Perception, Base Elements, or uh, Inspector Pro, one of those, it will not indicate that these are referenced because it's not part of your schema and solution, okay? So if you're gonna do an, an, an analysis like that, you will have to you know, account for that yourself. And another note that perform script by name will work on external files, it just has a different protocol. You have to put the file name in front with two colons and then the script name. Are there possible uses anywhere? As you saw my, um, I had a little user menu you might have seen on the right, that's hard coded right now, but I'm gonna change that to be another menu. So that menus table, you create multiple menus and put them wherever. Workflows, which I haven't added yet, um, to this anyway. Reports, action buttons, you name it. So there will be session updates because I did not include the workflows I was describing, the workflows and tasks in here, but I will add that later and upload it for you. And um, that's it. Please remember to fill out your evaluations and thank you for your time today. And um, does anybody have any questions for any of us or, or for Todd or I?
I don't see Tim. If you do speak up, because we do not have a microphone in here. Great. You all understand it perfectly. I love it. 